Educating for ecological identity. Is there really any doubt that we are in an ecological crisis? But I would say it's also a crisis of perception involving a lack of ecological or systemic thinking. We have more and more environmental education, but in reality, are we seeing any improvement beyond small scale behaviors? It's a crisis fueled by a lack of purposeful philosophical thought leading to a lack of one's understanding place in an ecological or biological world. Many people would like to deny even that they are even a part of the biological world. They live on the world, not within it, thinking of the world as the property of humanity. Let's define this term ecological identity. We know ecological literacy is a more familiar term. Um, it's best applied to how nature works as a physical system and environmental literacy to the broader human environmental interactions within those physical systems. An ecologically literate person would have at least basic comprehension of ecology, human ecology, and the concepts of sustainability as well as the wherewithal to solve those problems. Ecological identity is a term coined by Mitchell Tomaschow, and he says ecological identity refers to all the different ways people construe themselves in relationship to the earth as manifested in personality, values, actions, and sense of self. Environmental literacy then describes how humans as a collective see themselves in relation to their environment which is partially predicated on their ecological literacy, which describes their understanding of the ecosystem in which they live, leading to ecological identity, which describes how they fit as individuals into that ecological system and its biodiversity. It's a shift from simple behaviors to an emotional, philosophical, maybe even spiritual understanding of one's place in the biosphere. I believe that we do not have a chance to get out of the ecological crisis until we educate students for ecological identity, provide them the means to answer for themselves, then, as a part of the biosphere, how ought I to live? So we're talking about a shift in paradigm, a shift in the view of place in the world from dominator to mere part of a larger system. And experiences allow for an emotional connection to the natural world and then developing systemic, ecological, even philosophical thinking into the curriculum and away from a reductionist approach. Right now, in many elementary schools, students are spending all day practicing literacy and math, but doing no social studies and science. Yet, we as humans describe the world through social studies and science. We are teaching our kids to decode the information, but we're not giving them anything meaningful to decode. No wonder they get fidgety. We have them doing clerical work all day. We need to move beyond the clerical work, have them exploring the world and making sense of their world, doing what I call the sense making and getting beyond the basics to the metacognition, thinking about what they know and how they know it and what it means to them and how the pieces fit together then. Ideally then, wouldn't it be great if we could truly have an interdisciplinary teaching model? Because this leads to the deepest project-based learning and provides the most space for truly deep thinking and meaningful connections, moving beyond simply decoding of information. However, we know that this is not really possible in most secondary settings, and unfortunately, even in many elementary classroom settings as well. So what can you do within your classroom? get outside, have meaningful experiences investigating and playing outside, making connections, guiding students to think about their place and their connections, providing students a special place, a place to continue to go back to and explore and watch it change through the seasons, explore through literature, mine their family experiences and values about their relationship to the natural world. Have them explore that. What are they coming from? What is their story? Give them time to explore, to play, to contemplate. More unstructured playtime. Can you structure their unstructured playtime into your classroom structure?
taking elementary students on a ramble and seeing what inquiries emerge from what they find using an emergent curriculum. Then follow this up with access to resources to build on the experiences and really dig into the science. We know that by the time students reach middle school and high school, their attitude for nature is often already set from their, their childhood experiences. And nature is either something to be enjoyed or it's something scary and icky. And so we're fighting that battle. We have to address that, have students explore their story, what is their history in the natural world, and then give them a chance to explore it in a safe way to get over their ick factor. And for most students, the life sciences are, and the eco ecosystems are taught in biology or in, in middle school life science. This is the course where students are exposed to questions that lead them to their ecological identity. And it might be the only course where this happens. However, biology courses are often very reductionist in design and the antithesis of the holistic thinking necessary to develop an ecological identity. The study of biology can be so divided into parts, the whole is never even explored. We might even get through a whole biology course and never even explore the whole organism. Despite the addition of considerable new knowledge about genetics and ecology, a year's worth really, the scope and sequence of biology is still the same as it was in the 1950s, still a year-long course for most students. So either we need to reprioritize biology to what all citizens need to know, and I would say ecological systems, or we need more time to teach biology and the life sciences. And the teaching of biological evolution is an absolutely necessary part of environmental education. Understanding the evolutionary connection to other forms of life is essential so that students will have empathy for other forms of life and possibly take action to mitigate humanity's immensalistic relationships with much of the rest of the biosphere. So how could we change our curriculum in biology? We could shift to an ecological approach to the scope and sequence of the life sciences, allowing students to explore their intellectual and emotional experiences and connections to their understanding of the natural world, promoting interdisciplinary thinking. If you organize the curriculum around central thematic questions as opposed to the traditional phylogenetic or subtopic approach, this might allow for those interdisciplinary connections within the confines of your single subject, subject classroom. So consider this curriculum here where the first unit is on matter and energy and looking at the, the question of how do I participate in the flow of energy and matter in an ecosystem. The student is exploring from the self-centered view of a, of a teenager, what does it mean to me? And then within that, they would be learning about cells, they would be learning about photosynthesis, they would be learning about cell respiration and plants and fungus and decomposition. And so instead of having a unit just on cells and expecting students to make the connection of how that might apply to them, you're putting it in the context of a bigger question, of a bigger theme, so that you are helping them and guiding them to making those connections, to making and possibly those interdisciplinary connections as well. So in, ultimately, in the end, you're guiding a, them to explore what's their role in the biosphere, looking at how their body maintains balance, where they fit into a population, their evolutionary history, what their role in an ecosystem is, their genetic history, and their role in the flow of energy and matter, as opposed to three weeks on cells, a few weeks on genetics, a few weeks on ecosystems, and then hoping that they make the connections that often they don't make. So really about changing our story. Students need to develop a sense of the story that they or we are enacting. Studying other cultures, framing stories, might help them do this, might help them evaluate their own. An exploration and understanding of such framing stories requires three crucial elements. Ecological literacy, understanding social and political systems, and finally, understanding the human condition. This might require a shift from the cellular and molecular biology model to a science curriculum founded on environmental science by nature, an integrated science, and thus focused on understanding how humans interact with the natural world. It comes down to what does it mean to be educated. Students are building a transcript to graduate, get a job, or get into college, 
But what if the goal was more focused on learning and living as an adult in the interconnected world? Education could be about personal discovery and interactions with other people and environments. So what if students were asked to answer this simple question, how ought you to live in the world ecologically, socially, politically, and personally?